CS6 made changes to the preferences from CS5. CS5 made changes to the preferences from CS4, and so on. There have been several changes, so I wanted to review them. If you go up under Edit, Preferences, which is down at the bottom of the menu, hanging just off the screen, on a Mac, it's under your Photoshop icon. Uh, it would be down here somewhere. But basically, uh, we're going to Preferences, which also, by the way, is Control-K or, or Option-K on a Mac. It'll bring up your Preference dialog box. Now, I'm not quite interested in going through every single setting, but more so, there are certain settings that I'd really like to spend a little bit more time on to get just right, because some of these settings will enhance your workflow and give you better results. Under the General tab, there is Auto Update Open Documents. Now, depending on your system and your work configuration, I actually avoid this one. I turn it off because when I'm working over a network, it comes up that the document had changed when, in fact, it had not. So if I auto-update it, I lose control. So I would rather leave that unchecked so that I can tell it to save when I want it to save. We have Export Clipboard. Now the reason this is important is because if you're in Photoshop and you make a big screen clipping and then you go out of Photoshop, it can sit here and lag. It'll just sit there while it thinks about it and converts it over to a format that the operating system understands. Uh, so unless you're specifically exporting the clipboard for Illustrator or something along those lines, I would leave that unchecked. Using the shift key to tool switch is an important one. Uh, leave that on. And what that actually does is when you have a tool that has one of these subsets, by pushing the key, in this case the C key, I'm pushing the C key and nothing is happening. That's because it wants you to hit the shift key and then it rotates through the tools. And that's better because if we uncheck it, every time I hit the C key, it's going to change the tool that I'm actively working on. And, uh, and to me, it's just not as preferable as knowing that I need to use the shift key to cycle through the individual tools. By default, animated zoom is on. I turn it off. Uh, zoom resizes windows on a Mac it's preferable on a PC it's not preferable and the reason just comes down to how much workspace you have on a Mac you have the full desktop so it's easier to zoom in and out with a full resize of the window however on a PC I'm not quite sure what why it just it just never felt right to me so I turn that off on a PC but I leave it on on a Macintosh. Zoom with scroll wheel, I turn that off because I'll use the scroll wheel uh, unintentionally quite often and all of a sudden I'm zooming in and out so I don't like that. And uh, we have enable flick panning. Uh, that, was in, that was created at some point in time but I don't like it. Basically it allows you to click and drag through the image and it just kind of flicks it and it scrolls and it kind of scrolls around kind of like what, when you use your finger on a tablet. Uh, again, I don't like it, so I turn it off. So again, these are just settings that uh, make a difference in your workflow. If you're not expecting it to do something and suddenly it does it, that's not good. For the interface, we are currently in CS6. And by default, the color theme is like this, where it's this dark gray background. I don't like this. I tried using it. It, it just makes me want to go to sleep. I, I'm sorry, it, it's nighttime mode. I don't care for it, so I put it back to the same way it's been for the past 20 years, and I'm happier for it. We have open documents as tabs. I don't like tabs. I never like tabs. Uh, basically, you work in the entire screen window, and then you have tabs for each individual image. I don't like that. I just want to move images out of my way, moving them on to other monitors, use them as reference. When they're all as tabs, they're all tiled, and I can't see one image over the other, so it's one at a time. So I, I don't care for it at all. I turn that off. Enable floating document window docking, the exact same reason. I want my floating windows. I, I want to move things around. I don't want them locked into a one image at a time situation. Showing channels in color would be nice, but it's hard to see. So if you use channels, most often you have that unchecked. File handling, these are the default settings and they work pretty well for me. 
I would like to point out that in CS6, they have introduced an automatically save recover information every 10 minutes by default. So that's pretty good. So you're working on an image, and I know I'll work for 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and completely forget to save. This will automatically save every 10 minutes for you. So if you have a power outage, you can always go back, or a system crash, or something else. It, it, it'll save it every 10 minutes. You can go back to every 5 minutes. That's fine. It happens in the background. It doesn't bother you at all. See, there's a little checkbox, save in background. Unto itself, that's another benefit feature, uh, because in CS5 and older, if you save a document, it takes as long as it takes the file to save to the drive. So if you have an external drive, let's say USB 2, if you're saving to a USB 2 drive and it's a gigabyte file, you're going to be there for a while. Uh, so the benefit of save and background is that you can hit save and continue to work while it saves the uh, document information in the background, which quite honestly is pretty neat. So these are the two biggest changes in CS6 for any user, and again, the rest of these settings can remain as they are. Performance, this comes up as a bit of a gray area. How much do you want Photoshop to use, depending on how much memory you have in your system? Uh, you may want more or less. The general consensus is somewhere between 60% and 75%. In this case, it leaves 25% of your memory for operating system purposes. So to each their own, it just depends on how Photoshop and your system work and behave together. If it starts lagging and running slowly, you might want to adjust this. Down here, you have a scratch disk. You can choose to use the default, which is the boot drive. However, when you do that, the problem is that you have fragmentation across the drive, and you may well have a problem as far as slower caching speed in Photoshop. And then there's also a size as a factor as well. So if you have a secondary drive, then you can turn that on as well, and then it would use both drives. Or you may want to use uh, what is called a scratch drive, where the sole purpose of the drive is for Photoshop caching. I'll be honest with you, back in the day, it mattered when machines were slower. Today, it really, I, I couldn't tell you the difference. It doesn't matter. Uh, don't, don't overly think it. The only time I would come in here is to add another drive. Um, and if I have another drive, I might turn off the boot drive. But in general, it, it's nothing earth-shatteringly important, and I push some very large files. The cache level is another personal preference. By default, it's at 4. I always make it 6. And my reason for making it 6 is an old-school reason. Basically, every time you zoom in and zoom out, those are different cache levels. So if you zoom in, that counts as a cache level. If you zoom out, that counts as a cache level. And you can go in and out three times small, three times big. Now, it mattered more back in the day, primarily because the machines were slower. Today, I don't think it much matters because it, it's able to keep pace with me no matter what I'm doing. So again, if, if you have a slower machine, you might want to raise this up higher. But by today's standards, it really doesn't matter. If you have any graphical issues and glitches, you can uncheck this. Uh, this is your graphics card. So if you have any odd problems, you can turn that off. If it works fine, don't worry about it. Uh, cursors, you don't overly have to think about this, but I will point out that by default, you have a round cursor for a brush. If you hit the caps lock key, it will turn it into a crosshair. And that is something very disorienting to new users. So quickly, if I just create a new document, and I go to the brush tool, as you can see, I have a round brush. If I hit the caps lock key, it goes to a crosshair. And new users have absolutely no idea how they went from this, that they know what they're doing, to this, and it's not working right. So that's where that came from. Go back into preferences, and I'm going to go down to cursors. That's where I just was, where we were discussing that. Transparency and gamut. Uh, I don't worry about that. Units and rulers. You can only you can change these if you need to from inches to uh, pixels or something like that. If you're working on web-based images, 
guides, grid slices, just colors, nothing to worry about. Plugins, nothing you need to worry about unless you, for whatever reason, have two plugin folders. You can click a secondary plugin folder. Mostly you can ignore it if you don't even know what I'm talking about. And then type, they have some type settings, uh, which again, you can mostly just ignore. And that just goes through the uh, system preferences. There were a few key ones that were most important that you want to change or adjust to your own working style, but mostly these can be left alone.